Hey everyone, it is time to draw a map again. Today's map is going to be called Luna Portal. I always start with the name and then figure out the rest as I go. I have a couple ideas for what I want to do with this one. If you want to get the free version of the map, please sign up for the newsletter. The link is down in the description. If you want to become a paid subscriber, then you will get the full version of the map, which includes a GM version plus a player version with a grid and without a grid. Of course, if you like the video, please do subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. So this one is going to be Luna Portal. Uh, the only idea I have for it is I kind of want to have it be um, multiple levels that are connected by stairs, and then the portal would be at the top of the, all those different levels. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really sure what I want to do with that, but we'll see. Uh, as always, I have my standard layers here off to the side uh, the, with my different grids and the stuff for putting in the wall fill and the floor texture. So we'll fill in some of those later and I'll usually add a few extra uh, layers for different things. So let me go ahead and add a layer for my sketch. So this is where I'm going to do a rough sketch of some ideas and we'll see how it goes. We'll make this a uh, size 20 brush. Uh, I'll turn off the jitter for now for the sketch just uh, while we're trying this out. So the thing that I'm thinking is that, and I don't know with how much room we have how this is going to work, uh, because I really need to have at least two squares on each level. So if we if we start out that, let's just assume that like the, the bottom level, and I'm, I'll just make it the whole thing, but we'll probably, I might make some side rooms down. And then if we have another level and I can go out keeping out that you know making sure I've got at least 10 feet to work with and then do it again so I might only be able to have really two levels um, but then I could put I could put another level right there kind of offset maybe um, so you know and then and then each one would be connected with a staircase of some sort. So this is just a rough indicator of some stairs and we'll put those on on different sides so that uh, they're not so something like that. And each one of these could be, you know, a good like 20 feet high. So it's not easy to necessarily just climb up to this one. And maybe this one even just has a ladder that goes down. Um, oops, I did that the wrong way. But so something like that. Um, so there's actually not even a staircase, but rather more like a ladder that goes up to this top one. And, and then the, the portal would be up there. Um, I probably want to shrink this down and what I could do is put some uh, some other side rooms on here because I, I feel like this isn't going to need to go all the way in. So let's um, let's use that as an opportunity to kind of do something we don't usually do here. I'm going to highlight all of this. And then in, in GIMP what you can do is you can do select and float. And that takes everything you've just selected and now makes it into a floating layer that you can then move around. So I'm going to move that over here. And so we can kind of make that with a little more narrow on that side, but I can, I can widen that up a little bit. Uh, maybe just put it like there. Uh, and then I can anchor that layer back down. And now I've moved all of that stuff over to there. And then what I'll do is I'm going to get rid of all of this wall. And I'm going to redraw that to be smaller so that I can add in a few extra rooms over here. And this seems like a great place for a, a secret room that we can connect in there. Oh, something like that. So that gives us a little bit extra something to work with. Um, I could even put a, uh, I could really even extend this wall out. That might not be a bad thing is uh, if I take this staircase and actually connect it up here, 
where this actually comes all the way out because then you're forcing people to have to really walk around as opposed to coming this way. Um, and then if we put the entrance down here, just in the corner, then you kind of got a 50-50 shot of choosing the right direction, but either, either way you're going to need to go um, about the same distance to get to the stairs here it's a it's a straight shot but here you'd have to kind of walk around and then come up the stairs so uh, maybe once we get into it we even put in a couple pillars or something like that so so that's what I'm kind of envisioning here with that so let's go ahead and move on to the next piece which is where I will take my sketch and I'm going to dial down the opacity and I'll go over to my walls layer so I'm going to put my brush at uh, size of 20 we're going to turn our jitter on on my walls layer and then we're going to just start tracing this down and the the jitter gives it a nice jagged edge as we're doing it and i try to follow the squares but also don't be afraid to to bring them into the squares a little bit to to make it look where there's some alcoves and it looks a little more natural you know really play with the edge of the the map itself so that it uh, you use as much of the space that you have as possible. And remember that you know the sketch that we have is just our guide. It's not uh, we're not really tracing it. We're just using it to help us figure out roughly where we're wanting to go. So we'll bring this one down in here, and you know I really try to use as many of the squares as I can, so that it. Uh, has a, lots of area for for characters to be in. I always think of this as uh, if you're using this map and you've got tokens on it, you know, is there enough room for everybody to be in a particular area for that encounter? Because if there's not enough room, then it's kind of it's kind of weird when you've got six players in the party or something, and then a couple monsters, and there's only four squares in this in the room. It's kind of hard to work with. So. But we'll just kind of roughly there. We'll take it like you know, really close to that edge, and you know, maybe maybe over here, I kind of actually even take it a little further and bring this into almost a you know a little side room. Not much, but just enough to make it where there's something that could be in there. Maybe it's a statue or a, a ambush of some sort. And we'll take this down. And we'll go right out the side. And there we go. So that's our first section here. Let me go ahead and draw this hidden room that's going to be over here. And we'll just connect this. Um, maybe I connect it down on this one instead. So I'll connect it for now. And then we'll probably erase part of it later. So, so I don't know what will be down in here. But it's a good place for something to happen. Make a little... Try not to have just square rooms. Always good when there's places for things to hide. And there we go. Now I've got a little hidden area there. For the inner areas, I want to use a 10 pixel brush because it's a little smaller. So because uh, it's a ledge, not a wall. So I want to make sure that it's distinguishable as a ledge and not a wall. So let me go ahead and do the 10 point brush and we'll make it not quite so jagged and we'll just take it around try to keep the the 10 foot spacing um, maybe roughly follow the outer edge but not not worry too much about it and drop it down a little narrower there make it something people have to squeeze through and there we go and that's that one and then I think we'll put this one a little, a little further over but then leave it as the 10 down on this side maybe we we actually do something a little different let me what if I take this Maybe we're going to put the stairs on the outside edge there. Let's do that. Um, I'm just going to draw this one all the way around here. Like so. 
All right, and then we will put the last one way over here off to the side. Make it a nice little single file path to get around. And I will, I'll use an asset that I think I've got a ladder that I can put there. So there will be a ladder right at that level. And then we will have a, uh, we'll do the stairs here. And then we'll do the stairs there. So let me connect this to the outside like I was gonna. And we'll connect it over here as well. I didn't like that. Hang on. I didn't merge that in as nicely as I would want. So we'll connect that all the way to the outside. And then I'll erase this part right here so we can see that that's... So that's actually part of this level. There we go. Okay. So that is our walls and our ledges. Um, let me do the stairs now. So I got a layer here for my stairs. And we'll do the same thing. So we will pick this up. Um, I'll put it right here so it's at the top. Sorry, I'm still on the eraser. All right, so we're going to start it here at the top. And then we're just going to follow it down with the stairs. I want to end it a little before it gets to this thing here because I don't want it to look like it's connected. So I want to make sure there's a gap there. And then for the stairs themselves, we're going to, I'll do really like two steps per grid square. So something like this. And I try to do my little, have a little uptick on the higher side to kind of sell that this is a, these are stairs. There we go. And that's, that'll be it for those. So this first ledge, maybe it's not quite as tall as the other ones. But then this one here, I want it to be a really tall thing. So I'm going to really start these stairs way, way over on this side. So we're going to, we're going to make a, just a really jagged edge there. And I'll do, I'll do roughly the same thing. And we're just going to follow this around. And there's going to be a lot of stairs here because this one, I really want to sell that this one is actually going quite high. And I'm going to kind of turn this here because it's going around a turn. So I want to make it so that they're closer on the inner edge than they are on the outer edge. So naturally the, the grid squares are going to be a little harder to stay in line with as you're making a turn like this. But it's uh, I think people can get the gist of it. It's more about that there's going to be an elevation change as opposed to the specific location. And then it kind of gets a little straighter so we can aim for our two steps per square. And I think I'll put one more in there. Like so. So that's a lot of stairs leading up to the to this top level. And then like I said, we'll just have a ladder there for that one. So we can definitely turn off our sketch layer now. And we can see that uh, we've got our outside walls and we've got our ledges and we've got our stairs all drawn in. We need to add some shadows and things to make it a little more clear, but let's uh Let's go ahead and do, let's do our stone, our fills first. So I'm going to come down to my wall fill layer. And for the solid fill, I just do a straight white. And then for the stone fill, we're going to do my filters, render the cell noise. And we get all those dots. And then we're going to use a filter and the artistic water pixels. And that's going to squish it out, kind of do like a watercolor look to it. But then with our really dark colors, it, it really looks like stone to me. So I'm going to make the pixel size a little bigger and make the smoothness a little 
um, less smooth and we'll see how that looks for us. I don't have any particular settings I go with, just kind of fiddle with it until I think it looks okay. And we'll go with that. Now obviously the problem here is that we can't see to the ground, we can't see our grid anymore. So what we need to do is we need to add our layer mask, which I already have on here is the layer masks for these two layers. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll go up to our walls layer and we're going to fuzzy select everywhere that we want to be transparent. We want to be able to see the grid. And so all those areas you can see that with you, those are all now selected. Every single layer is now selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grow that, make that a little bigger so that it uh, goes all the way into the wall. So we have no question that it's going to be uh, transparent all the way through where we want. Then we're going to come down to the layer mask and we want to fill that with black. And by filling it with black, it makes that layer transparent in the areas that are black, where the mask is black, I should say. And there you go. So that has made the stone fill transparent in the areas that I, where I made the mask black. And what we're seeing is we can now see down into the solid fill. And that's why it's all white because we still are seeing the solid fill. So if I bring it down and go to the mask for the solid fill and do the same thing and I fill it with black, then it becomes transparent and now we can see all the way down to the grid level. And so now we've got a, a pretty good look there. And because we're using a mask, that'll make it easier later on when I try to clean up some of the uh, hidden passageway stuff. So why don't we go ahead and add our floor texture. Now the trick with the floor texture is that we've got multiple levels here. And to help sell the notion that the these levels here are each higher as you go um, up the stairs, what we want to make is for this lower level to be relatively dark. And then what we'll do is we will lighten it as we get higher and higher. And let's do the floor texture. And for that, we're going to do render noise and our plasma noise. And I'm going to make a lot of turbulence and we're going to do a new seed. We'll, I'm just going to click a few times. I just want to get a, something. I think this is a good one because I believe the, the blues and the purples are the ones that are the darkest. So we'll find out in a second here. And then we're going to colorize this. And we're going to choose a, so a gray. And yeah, so those purple colors really are the, the dark ones. So that's good. So I'm going, to, I'm going to dial this down though. And I'm going to make it... I don't want it to be too dark because I, I want it to make sure it looks like a floor, but I need to have enough range in there where I can lighten it up as I go. So it'll, I'll probably make it a little darker than I would otherwise. So let me, uh, let's go with this one. I'm just kind of arbitrary, but there's our floor texture. And so that's obviously really dark. So what we want to do though, is we're then going to come up to our walls. And we're going to go layer by layer here and I'm going to select just this first section here and we'll grow it to make sure I get the whole thing. And so this whole section now is selected and I want this to be just a little bit lighter than the last section, than the, than the bottom, because this is obviously a little bit taller. You know, this is not the highest one. This only elevation is probably maybe 20 feet or so, but I need to make it a little bit lighter. And for that, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to save just to make sure. And then we're going to go up to colors and levels. And there's a couple of sliders here. And what we want to do is you want to move the slider until it makes that layer just a little bit lighter. And I believe if I move this one towards, I'm sorry, no, nope, I got it wrong. I gotta go the other way. So I move it towards away from the, uh, from the darker. And you can see that now it's just a little bit lighter. And so if I go just using the numbers, so if I go to here, that puts it at a two and that makes it just a little bit lighter than the other ones. And so if I hit okay there and select none. So now you can see that that layer is just a little bit lighter than the previous one. And then we're going to, we're going to save that. And the reason I'm saving is because I've had some cases with GIMP where when I'm using the levels tool, it's crashed on me on multiple occasions. So I'm always a little careful with that one. So now let me select the next layer and that's this part in here. 
and we're going to grow that. And so now I'm selecting this one. Now this is the one that's the really tall one. So this one would be okay for us to really dial down that darkness. So I'm going to go back to my floor texture and we're going to go to our levels. And now we're going to drag this over. And so the other one, when I did it, I moved it to a two. And so now this one is about the same uh, lightness as the previous level. So what I want to do is keep going and bring it down. And if I make it to a four, now it's twice as light as it was before, but I think I'm going to go even further than that. And I'm going to bring it down to, we'll bring it down to a six maybe. So now that one has gotten quite a bit lighter and we'll select none. And so that's helped. And then we've got one more. Now we've got the actual top one here. Um, what I could do though, is I could actually um, add a layer mask here and we'll do, and I can come up to this one and do my fuzzy select inside my wall again. And we'll grow it. And if I were to fill in this mask now with a black, that gets rid of all of the texture for that level. And so now that one does look just a little bit brighter than the other ones. Not much, but just a little bit. So we've got our lowest level is the darkest and then slightly lighter and then really light and then even, and then there's no texture actually at all once we get up to that level. So I think we're in pretty good shape there. Now what we want to do is we need to add our wall shadows. So let's come back up to our wall layer. So everywhere where there should be a shadow, we're going to do this. And then we're going to grow it. And we're going to select the brush with the 50% uh, hardness. And we get some jitter and we'll go with that. Then we'll go down to our wall shadow layer, which has a really light opacity. So it's going to be very transparent. Stroke our selection. There we go. All right, and now we've got a little bit of a shadow. Um, I'll darken that up a little bit. There, I think that's better. Now we have an issue in that this, there should not be a shadow on the inside of this, but there does need to be a shadow around the inside of that. So we've got a little bit of cleanup here. Let's go back to our walls. We'll start with the easy one. And that is this one right here. We're going to do a fuzzy select inside of this wall. And then we'll come down to our wall shadow and we can just hit delete. And that'll get rid of that shadow there. So now the shadow is only on the outside edge, not on the inside edge. It gets a little trickier for the other ones, but we have a thing we can do there too. So we, we need the wall, the shadow on the outer edge, but we don't need it up here because this is, this is not an outer edge. So we're going to select this area in here and then we're going to subtract this area. So we got to select our free select tool and this button right here is the subtract. And what that's going to do is we're just going to hand draw around that edge and hit enter. And so now the selection that we have does not include this shadow that we've got. And we'll come down to our wall shadow and we'll hit delete. And there we go. Now we've deleted the, the, all that extra shadow stuff that was showing through without messing with the one that needs to stay. And we have one more case where we have to do that. And that's this inside edge here. Oops, sorry. We'll go to our walls layer and this inside edge here, we will select it. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to subtract this part here. And we're going to actually do it like this because we need to, there are some parts here that do need to have a shadow. So we'll all right, so we've done that. And now when we delete that, come to our wall shadow and there we go. And I think that did what we wanted. So we select none. All right, so now we have our shadow on the outside edge of there. We have a shadow on the outside of edge of that one and a shadow on the outside edge of that one, but we got rid of all the ones on the ledges themselves. 
Now we need a shadow around these stairs. So this is part of our so this is part of our stairs and so they didn't actually get a shadow when we drew that because it's part of the stairs. So we're just going to hand draw that just to keep it simple. It's a pretty small area. So we'll just select that same brush that we did before, go to our wall shadow layer and we will just trace that by hand like so. And then obviously it came through to the other side, so we will just erase that. I'm gonna use the solid brush, turn off the jitter, and then we'll just freestyle drawing around the edge here to get rid of that shadow that overlapped the inner edge of these stairs. And there we go. So now we got our shadow around all the stairs, but we're not done. We still got more to do. When we have different levels like this, it gets uh, really complicated really quickly with the shadows and the things that you need to do to really sell that depth. And so with these stairs, we've got a few things that we're going to do. First, we're going to, we're going to do shadows on each individual step. And so for that, I'm going to go back to my my regular brush here, we're gonna make it, um, we'll make it 20 and we'll see how that does. And we're just gonna hand sketch this one. Now, you know, there's there's some things we could do and we could try to select different things and, and whatnot, but for now, I'm just gonna hand, try to hand do the shadow. And this is gonna go on the bottom edge of each step. And we're just gonna add that little bit of shadow to it. I think my brush probably should be a little bit bigger because I don't think I'm getting, I'm needing to get closer than I really want to for it. But So there we go. Added a little shadow there and that helped bring that one out. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. And then we'll do the same thing over here. And there's obviously a lot more steps here, so this will take a little longer to do. usually always a little bit of cleanup that has to get done afterwards as well. So well, so we'll start over again. One thing I encourage everybody to do if you're using GIMP is remember that GIMP does not auto save. It doesn't auto save and it doesn't have backups. So if it ever crashes while you are in the middle of doing something, you are going to lose everything that you are working on. So I encourage you to definitely save early and often. And there we go. And you can see how just adding those shadows really made a big difference in the the depth that you get and, and really selling the fact that we are coming from this level and that these stairs go up to this level here. And we're going to do one more thing after I save, we will do one more thing to try to change the shading of this here so that it goes from this level of darkness to this level of darkness. And so by doing that, that'll even more sell the effect that 
these stairs go up to this location. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to free select this area. And, and I'm just, I'm just doing it by hand. This is not, um, I'm not uh, using the fuzzy select where I can select the boundaries. I'm just going to select this one by hand. It's a relatively small area. So I'm, I'm okay with it being, uh, a little, a little bit jagged and it's not so important that I get it precise. So there we go with that. Now, what I think I want to do is I'm going to go down to my floor texture and I'm going to lighten this. So I'll go to my levels. And if you remember when we made this texture, we made it, uh, we brought it down by two and I think I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to bring this down by two to make it lighter. So now the steps actually match the top level. But now what I want to do is I'm going to add a new layer here. And I'm probably going to set the opacity down on this one. And I'm going to try to do a gradient fill. And I can do foreground to transparent. And so it's going to go black to transparent, which means it'll make it um, darker on the bottom and then lighter on the top. So I'm going to fill it going um, and I want it to be a, a linear. So I'm going to fill it from here down up to here. So if I go like that and you can see what we got here is I'm going to I'll put it about there so that that top step, I'll put it all the way. And you can see how as I move it out, it, it adjusts, you know, if I move it all the way up here, then those steps get really dark there. But if I move it here, then it kind of puts them, you know, you, you adjust it and where that transparency versus the foreground is changes. So we're just going to try to find one that looks okay. I think I'll actually just put it right on the edge. That seems like the best place. I'll just hit enter and select none. And there we go. And I think that's not too bad. We, you know, it clearly is darker down here and they get progressively lighter as you go to the top. And then this one basically matches the color of here to sell the fact that that is really the same level as this one. So now we want to do that with here. And this one's going to be a little bit harder because it's a turn. Um, so we won't be able to get the same kind of effect, but we will do the best we can. I may actually do it in two parts. I think I might do a part like here and then a part down here. Uh, it's also going to be tricky because the difference in colors here doesn't seem as great as the ones here but uh, we'll give it a go. So let me go back to my free select and, and I'm just going to do this by hand again. And I think I can take this all the way down to like this one. I think that'll probably be a good spot. And then again, this doesn't need to be perfect because this is just shading. And there we go. Now I'm going to do this on a different layer because I want to be able to update the, the opacity um, independently of this one. I don't want to mess up this one as I'm going. Go back to my gradient. It's the same thing. So we'll start at the bottom and we're going to bring it up. And those can, oh, so I think for this one, what we'll do is we'll do it like this. We're going to, I'll actually put this one way up in the middle here and we'll go with that. And then I'm going to do it again for this bottom part. And I think it's okay if I make the steps a little darker than the ground that they're connecting to, because it's not so much that they match that color as it is that the, it shows the change. And that's really what we're after. So it doesn't really matter if the steps start out a little bit darker. 
And again, I'm going to do this on a different layer. I don't want to, I don't want anything I do to, to adversely impact the other things that I already have. So let me go back to the gradient. I'm going to do a quick save and we're going to come back here and this one. So that's obviously way too dark, but if we do like that, Trying to see what works well. Let me, um, oh, here, let me do this. So let me bring this all the way over here. And I'll bring this one all the way up here. But then I'm going to change the opacity of it. And now let me bring this one back down. There we go. Now we're kind of getting into the what I'm after. Yeah, I think right about there is what I'm looking for. Select none. And now I think we've got some pretty good depth showing up there. And the next thing that we actually need to do is we need to make this hidden passage a little better. So we have this hidden area here. So we, we don't want that to connect. We want, it, we want to make sure that that's hidden. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to my walls layer and we are going to erase this part of the wall. Like that. And then I will come down to the wall shadow and I'm going to erase that as well because we don't need any shadows in there. And then I will go to the fill. And for the fill, we're actually going to, I don't want to erase it. What I want to go to is my layer mask and I want to make it white because now I want it to actually, I want to actually see the fill. So we'll start with the, with the solid fill. Oops. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint I mean, without the jitter. We're going to just paint in there. And what we're going to see here is we're going to see the solid fill showing through which is what we want. And I'll do the same thing on the stone fill. And as I paint over it with white, it fills in the stone because that is actually already there, but now we're able to see it. And so now from, if you're using this map uh, from this side, uh, assuming that you're using a fog of war, you would see just stone just like anything else um, and then you don't actually see this hidden room until you reveal it. Uh, to give you a little bit of info on how I do some of the DM marks, so I, I will usually draw some dots here to fill in and show for the DM that there is something, um, that there is a passage there. And so what I do for that is I will select, I use this color here, and I use the regular brush and I think I just use a five, no jitter, but I set the spacing to be, I believe 175. And what that does is it puts the, it draws it at a, uh, where each, each mark is going to be 175 pixels away or 175% further away than the last one that it drew. So we'll, we'll start here and then we're just going to draw. Oh, those are way too small. I'm sorry. We're going to set these at 10 and, and then we're going to start drawing that Oops. and I can't draw a straight line. So like that, and then we'll bring that one down here. And now we have an indicator of that, where that, that passageway is. Um, so that's the, uh, those are the DM marks and I'll label that on this particular layer. Do a quick save. That's uh, what is going to be Luna Portal. Um, and so up top here, there will be some sort of uh, portal that I will put at the top that you're basically after. And uh, the the notion is, is that you've got this entrance and then you work your way around to 
the staircase that takes you up to here, and then the staircase takes you up to here, and then a ladder would take you up to there, and you'd get the whole thing. So um, Luna Portal, there it is. Uh, I'll polish it, and I will get the free version out onto the newsletter. So any newsletter subscribers will get the free version. Um, if you're a paid subscriber, you will get the full version. Once I'm done, that'll have the GM version as well as a gridded and a gridless player version. So please do subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, I'd love to hear in the comments what your thoughts are about this particular map. If you have ideas for names of, of maps, uh, go ahead and put those down in the comments too, because I, I always start with the name and then I just kind of let that uh, inspire me to decide what the map should be. So if you have some ideas for different map names, go ahead and throw those down in the comments as well. And uh, I'll put them in my list. And uh, down the road, you might find me drawing a map with one of the names that you suggested. So, um, But I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, definitely subscribe to the newsletter. And uh, until next time, take care.